Welcome you all to the course on uh, defects in materials. In the last class, we have looked at an elegant methodology with which we can find out the uh, direction in which the force is going to act on the dislocation, okay, and what will be the magnitude of the force. Both aspects we have looked at it. Now, let us look at the case where if many dislocations are present, around each dislocation there could be some internal stresses which are there present, different directions in which uh, okay, the forces can operate on them. Let us try to derive an expression for the forces between the dislocations. This can be done, first we will do in a qualitative way to understand it and then we try to go in a uh, do, derive a quantitative expression. Okay. Let us assume the case that we have a one dislocation, okay. it could be an edge or a screw dislocation, it does not matter with a bias vector B okay. and then another dislocation is there which is very close to it with a bias vector B. Okay. What will be the effect of this dislocation on the stress field in a sample here? What is the possibility in which we can consider it is there? We assume that these are so close by. If I try to do a budget circuit around this dislocation, these two together, what will be the bias vector of this dislocation? This together will turn out to be 2B, correct? So the expression for the self energy of a dislocation E equals W we have written half G B squared okay, logarithm of R by R0, where R0 is the core radius. Okay. Assuming this to be since the logarithmic term we can neglect it, this will be equal to, this is for a edge dislocation, okay. this is for a screw dislocation. So essentially G is a material constant, so essentially it depends upon W is proportional to B squared it becomes, correct? So if you look at the B squared, that self energy, here it will be 4 B squared, in this case it will turn out to be, correct? Let us take the same case where these two dislocation, one dislocation is here, another dislocation is here in the same slip plane but it is very far away. Then if we take and find out a stress field around a particular point, we have to find out a stress due to this as well as due to this, okay. Then the self energy due to both of them will be, one will be B squared, okay, the other one will be B squared. So the total energy due to this dislocation W will be equal to twice B squared. That means that as the dislocations are far apart, the total energy is getting reduced. That means that if we have two dislocations which are very close, they will try to repel each other so that they move far apart to reduce their overall energy. Is it clear? Right. This is essentially what is going to happen. Okay. This we can qualitatively we can understand it. Let us take an another case. <coughs> where that is a one dislocation, another dislocation which is there, this is a bias vector B is in this direction positive. Here the bias vector B is in this direction. Okay. That is, this is something like an edge dislocation if you consider in one the bias vector is uh, extra plane is in this, another extra plane is in this direction. In fact, if you use the expression of force equation which we have written earlier, that if you apply a stress in this direction, in one of these dislocation the force will be acting in this direction, 
in this one the force will be acting in the opposite direction that means that this dislocation will move in this direction this dislocation will move in the direction when they come and meet together the extra planes will become one on top of the other the dislocation will vanish that means that these dislocations are going to attract each other qualitatively we can understand that okay. a third case which we can consider is these dislocations are not the same slip plane one dislocation in this plane another dislocation in this plane is going to be there what will happen when these dislocations are present like this or one moves in this direction another moves in this direction the other case which we can consider it is that one dislocation like this another dislocation is like this but this is in one slip plane this is in another slip plane what is the sort of forces which will happen looking at it is difficult to tell correct we have to do some quantitative and expression to find out what will be the stresses the uh, forces which will be acting between the dislocations this is precisely what we will be trying to look at it okay what we have considered here is the case of a two screw dislocations S1 is one dislocation, S2 is another dislocation, this is in a slip plane in which it is moving, okay. S2 is in an another slip plane, okay, yeah. and the line direction of the dislocation for both of them okay, is in the Z direction, positive Z direction is this direction, this is X and this is Y, okay. Just uh, to Uh, differentiate between these two dislocations. I had put that bias vector of this dislocation is B1, and bias dislocation of this dislocation is B2. Okay, most of the perfect dislocations, it will be the bias vector could be the same value. Okay. And in the last class, we have derived an expression for what is the direction in which the force is going to apply, right? For a generalized expression, for a if we apply an external stress, what will be the force? in this one the philosophy what we have to look at it is, is that if there is a assume that there's a dislocation which is there in this uh, s1 okay so essentially if a dislocation is present at this position at a particular position here this dislocation will be generating some stresses okay those stresses are sigma y z sigma x z these are all the only stresses which are going to come correct and we know the bias vector of that dislocation we can find out the strain field we can find out what is going to be the energy corresponding to that at that point and the rate of change of energy will give you the force which is acting right so that will be the force between acting between a dislocation present and dislocation this is the distance r between the dislocations okay that is essentially what is being shown here okay so sigma y z and sigma x z are essentially nothing but the stress which the first dislocation is going to act here and in this expression f is equal to x z into b z minus j into sigma y z into b z okay this is nothing but the bias vector of the second dislocation now we substitute for sigma x z and sigma y z the expressions which are derived okay then this force equation will turn out to be x squared plus y squared this is how it will turn out to be okay so with respect to i if we take it that corresponds to a force that is this is equal to fx plus i into fx plus 
j into f y we can write it is it not this same expression this is with a uh, Cartesian coordinate system which we have used we can use a coordinate system where with respect to this x direction angle theta and this is r correct r is nothing but r squared equals x squared plus y squared if we substitute for this this expression will turn out to be this is the sort of an expression which we will be getting it and that is what is given here ok or this should be strictly speaking the way we have defined it it should be b1 and b2 ok b1 is the budget factor of the dislocation if b1 equals b2 that will become b square correct this expression gives what is the force which is acting along the line and here b1 and b2 are uh, magnitude of uh, the dislocations which we are taking it okay. if at the same type of a dislocation b1 and b2 are in the same direction b1 and b2 if you take product this is going to be a f is going to be positive that means the force between the dislocation is repulsive ok and it is just a radial symmetry. So, any direction if you take it for a screw dislocation ok if the dislocations are lying parallel to each other one dislocation like this another dislocation like this parallel to each other ok it does not matter where it is with respect to a distance r the same force which is going to act and the direction in which the force is going to act is along this line joining ok the line perpendicular to two dislocation lines correct that is the direction in which the force will be acting. Okay. Suppose we assume that one has got a bias vector which is positive and another has got a bias vector which is negative then the force is going to be attractive one because of its negative okay. this is much easier to understand. Now, let us look at the case between forces between two parallel h dislocations ok. What will happen in the case of an h dislocation? In the case of an h dislocation the force which is going to act this expression we have derived already ok this is for an h dislocation f equals correct this is what the force which is going to be no b x will be nothing but uh, if uh, the second dislocation we give a bias vector b2 ok I assume it to be then it will be b2 and if the first one has got b1 okay, then the x we have to substitute for sigma y x and sigma x x the expression which we have derived for a stress field around a h dislocation if you do that this is the sort of an expression which we will be getting it for the fx this is the expression and this is the expression which we will be getting it for f y. If you use cylindrical coordinate system then what is going to happen is that that f will be and if the bias vectors are the same magnitude ok b 1 equals b 2 then it will be g b squared by these are all the terms here. So, this the one term which is that i this part corresponds to the f x and this one will correspond to the f y correct. That means, that the force which is going to up, uh, act between the dislocations that is what we have done is though we have considered in this case also one dislocation which is moving in this plane ok. With respect to this we have defined the coordinate system ok this is the e z x and y ok. 
and this is the slip plane of the other dislocation okay. Other dislocation is at some height you can take it to be y0 okay above which that slip plane is going to be there the dislocation is moving. Here we have to consider a few cases. Suppose this entire experiment which we are doing it is assumed that it is at room temperature. When we do an experiment at room temperature, the dislocations most of the time only glide on the slip plane. That means that when the dislocations glide on the slip plane, we have to consider the force between the dislocations in the x direction only has to be considered. At high temperatures, when the dislocation can climb, okay, at that time only we have to take the climb force into consideration. Okay. Now let us take this case of room temperature. In this particular case, we have to take only the this force Fx only has to be considered. Fy we do not have to consider for the present. Okay. This is the expression for Fx, correct? And y we assume it to be some distance. What is y? y is some distance with respect to that is along the slip plane, what is the height at which this dislocation is being present. Okay. So, in this particular case, when we take x squared plus y squared, all these terms have to be taken okay, with respect to y remaining constant, only the x is changing. That means that suppose this dislocation is stationary, we assume that the disloc dislocation is moving in this plane. Correct. If it moves in that plane, what is the sort of force which will be acting between the dislocations? The force which will be acting will have a component that general force will be in this direction, one with a component in this and another in the component in this direction. We are looking at only the F component which is there in the glide plane is what we are considering it. And for these calculations to make it easier, these distances x and y itself can be written in terms of the bias vector as a unit. Okay. That is essentially what is being done and shown here. Here uh, that is one or this can be written in terms of another way in which y is a constant that is this is or I had taken it to be y0 in that figure it is given as y. So, if this is constant x can be written in terms of y0 that is only for the purpose of uh, making the calculations simpler and in this you take f by this factor to be the one which we are trying to plot it okay become a dimensionless parameter okay. Now if we try to look at it what is becoming very interesting in this case is that as the dislocations are coming close to each other the repulsive force increases that is you assume that one dislocation is here another dislocation is here this dislocation comes close to this dislocation moving in the slip plane then the force is repulsive force is increasing because both the dislocations have got the same sense of bias vector that is both are either positive or negative. And then at some particular distance you find that the force starts decreases then it becomes 0 at some particular distance then it becomes from repulsive to attractive again it changes direction that is as the dislocation you assume that it moves from here and reaches this point just going on top of it various positions we can assume this dislocation has moved. So, at each of the position when we see as it comes close up to a particular point it becomes repulsive then from here to here it becomes attractive then from here to here it becomes repulsive okay then again become attractive that is the way it is going. Right. So, this if you look at this expression itself it becomes very clear. In this expression that for the expression for fx if x becomes equal to y then it becomes fx becomes 0. Okay. 
that is a value in between what is essentially going on the repulsive forces will start decreasing right reaches a maximum start decreasing reaches 0. Then you can see that the similar thing should happen on the other side and uh, for value of x greater than y okay s squared minus y squared if you see it this is going to be always a positive quantity okay that is where the repulsive is going to be there. Then the other case when x squared x and y are positive but uh, y is greater than x then it will become negative correct. So, it becomes attractive that is why this force term when we look at it we have this sort of a force which is acting on the dislocation. So, there are regions as the dislocations are moving in the slip plane okay repulsion then repulsion decreases and it becomes 0 then it becomes attractive okay then it changes what will be the consequence of this this sort of a motion especially let us look with respect to that expression here when theta becomes uh, 0 that is theta becomes 90 degree that is 1 on top of that is when this dislocation comes here on it this angle theta becomes with respect to this theta becomes 90 degree okay then what it becomes it becomes 0 4 is 0 correct that means that when a dislocation is moving from here to here like this if it tries to remain on top of it the force which is going to be there in the x direction is going to be 0. That is a low energy configuration as far as the stresses are uh, forces are forces acting between the dislocations right that is what it would try to prefer. Suppose the two dislocations have a different bias vectors one is a positive and another is a negative okay. Then what will happen is that these force directions will change that is what essentially is being shown in the other curve okay A and B correspond to that. So, the effect of it is that suppose we have one dislocation and another dislocation which is of the same sign which they are one assume that both are moving when they are moving if they move and at some position this is a position in which this dislocation has reached it has reached in this configuration it has a minimum energy right it will try to maintain that because the force in the x the, uh, direction becomes 0. Okay. Suppose that is a dislocation in this the dislocation is in the same slip plane is there this will attract each other and cancel. The other case is that instead of it this dislocation is going to be there here. Now, what it is going to happen is that when these dislocations are going to be making an angle of 45 degree this is going to be a minimum energy configuration for the fx. So, they will try to remain in a in that configuration it can be there. What is essentially is going to happen is that the dislocations get attracted positive edge dislocation and negative edge they will be attracting each other. So, they will try to come together at some position that is a minimum the force is going minimum that is the configuration which try to move. Now, if the dislocation has to move both of them have to move together that they will not be able to move independently when we start with the dislocations are randomly distributed okay are generated at small uh, that is when the density of dislocations is very small and the dislocations are very far away the interaction between the dislocations is not going to be very effective. But as the dislocation density increases then we find that the dislocations move there are positions where the dislocations can come together. Now, it has become like they have become a couple dislocation okay. Now, the stress which will be required is to make this couple itself to move okay. This sort of situation when it happens when you have a positive dislocation and one edge dislocation on two different lines joined together like this you know what it is called this is called as dislocation dipoles. And this dipole has to move together. What is a dipole? Dipole is nothing but 
this dislocation in the same di with the same sense vector but bulges vectors different okay and if they are on the slip plane now they cannot come and join together okay at room temperature but the minimum energy configuration is in this position so it has to move like this okay this is how a dislocation dipole will form during uh, deformation this is considering at room temperature now let us consider the high temperature case what will happen at a high temperature okay at high temperature we have to consider this force fy which is going to act right because fy is the force which is uh, acting between the dislocations that component okay because any direction the net force is going to be always between these dislocations in this direction but this we are splitting it up into a component which is fy and a component which is fx at room temperature fx is the only component which is important because now the dislocation if it has to climb the vacancies have to be generated and the vacancies have to be mobile or the vacancies should diffuse into it to climb up or down correct so when at temperatures where the vacancy moment becomes important then what will happen if you have lot of dislocations which are present in the material and the dislocations are randomly distributed like this okay and uh, some dislocations may be like this okay. so this dislocation and this dislocation two different planes let us consider this case between this one and this particular one okay one because of the uh, force glide force which is going to be there these two come at a particular position that is the minimum energy configuration which it will reach then the climb force can make the dislocation emitting vacancies or absorbing vacancies to climb up okay and then these two can come together and cancel each other correct so this is what it will happen between uh, dislocations with uh, positive and negative bulges vectors okay this let us take the case uh, uh, what is the situation in which this sort of a phenomena can occur this sort of a process can occur is suppose i have a sample which i have deformed at room temperature cold work sample and uh, as you know the cold work sample the hardness is very high now i wanted to reduce the hardness for which i take it to a temperature close to 0.5 tm okay and heal it then these dislocations will start moving and rearranging themselves so in that process all the positive and negative the dislocations because the number need not be that same right the density of the dislocations with positive bulges vectors and negative bulges vectors need not be the same but they will be moving and cancelling each other then if they annihilate annihilate by this process and they are removed but what about these dislocations with only edge character which are going to be present that is the dislocations with not edge edge or screw but with the same bulges vector direction they are going to be present okay we assume that only the this sort of dislocations will be present like this na randomly distributed now because the other dislocations positive and negative in this case have annihilated now in this particular case how will this dislocations uh, interact the force is going to be essentially a repulsive force correct so this repulsive force if we try to look into this expression this gives what is going to be the force between the dislocations when they are above each other this term the x term is going to be zero correct okay this will reach a value of a minimum value okay repulsive but it, then what will happen is that here that force in f direction okay that's going that component is going to be zero when they are above each other now these dislocations will try to arrange themselves into 
one on top of the other. This we call it as a polygonization phenomena, correct? You might have studied this is what a polygonization is. That is the dislocations move and arrange themselves one on top of it. Essentially this creates what we call it as a small angle boundary. So if the dislocations are randomly distributed, the forces between the dislocations is going to be high. Okay. If they arrange in this sort of a configuration, the forces between the dislocations get reduced considerably. This is a more stable configuration. This is how during recovery process, lot of uh, small angle boundaries are generated in the material. And then dislocations with positive and negative bias vectors, they climb up, okay. That process also will take place. In addition to it, as we have seen, the, they are attracted to each other also. Both these processes will lead to the annihilation of dislocations with the positive and negative sense. Of the, that's either for screw or for edge dislocation. That is the forces between dislocations which are of uh, either edge character or screw character, but they are parallel to each other. That's an another case which we can consider is suppose it's a, the same dislocation, okay. This is how this dislocation is there. And there is going to be an another dislocation which is being present somewhere else here, okay. We assume that there is a dislocation which is there. This is a bias vector in this is in this direction. Here bias vector is in this direction. Line direction remains the same for both of them, but one is in this slip plane, another is in another slip plane, the height, correct? That is, this dislocation has got a bias vector in this direction, this dislocation dislocation bias effect is in this direction. So bias vectors are perpendicular to each other, the line directions are the same. But these two dislocations, there is uh, neither attraction nor repulsive forces will uh, come between them. If you look at this expression, this is for an edge dislocation, correct? And uh, if the dislo dislocation at the origin turns out to be a screw dislocation, okay? This stress doesn't, uh, it doesn't uh, generate this stress, internal stress, not this stress it will generate, right? So because of that, the force between the dislocations just you can say just zero, it does not matter. Whereas dislocations whether it is uh, screw or edge dislocations, the same type of dislocations that is what we talked about so far is with respect to if these are all are edge dislocations but one with a positive uh, bias vector and another with a negative bias vector. This is how they will try to annihilate each other. The same thing will happen for screw dislocations as well. So these expressions give us a quantitative way of finding out what is the sort of forces which will be acting between two types of uh, uh, dislocations. In fact, here we have considered only dislocations which are parallel to each other. It can so happen that we can have a one dislocation is lying like this, okay. There is an another dislocation which in this way also dislocation could be there. They could be edge or they could be a screw character. That is a, there are various ways in which the dislocations will be lying with respect to one another in uh, real materials, correct, when they are being deformed. Okay. Using these expressions, okay, we have only just looked at between parallel edge dislocations or parallel screw dislocations. But with uh, parallel dislocation with uh, uh, one edge component, okay. For one that bias vector is in one direction, the line directions are parallel, but for an another edge dislocation, the bias vector of both of them are perpendicular to each other. There are so many cases which we can consider. All these things have to be considered in real systems to find out the sort of forces which will be acting between them and 
these are all the forces which are going to decide what sort of microstructure which will evolve in the material when the process of recovery takes place or when we do an annealing of a material. That will also tell how the hardness is going to change or how the strength is going to change, correct? So this information is very much uh, necessary. Essentially what we have looked at it is that uh, forces between dislocations we have considered qualitatively as well as how to quantify these forces. Okay. What is the effect of this uh, force on real examples of when we do recovery of uh, that is deformed samples when we try to anneal them. Okay. What is the way in which the dislocations annihilate each other and how different cells are small angle boundaries they are forming in the material. Okay. That is what we have looked at it. In the next class what we will try to consider it is that we so far considered about the high temperature but about the high temperature process we mentioned that the dislocation climbs up and they annihilate both the force. But we did not talk about what will be the effect of the consequence of climb on the concentration of vacancies in the material what will be the effect of these vacancies on forces which it will generate. This aspect we will look at the next class, we will stop here now.